GIMP 2.8 has been in development for three and a half years. It was released as an official version on May 4, 2012 with many new features, too many to discuss in one tutorial. The purpose of this video is to showcase the most visible part of the new GIMP 2.8 user interface, single window mode. We're going to customize single window mode to the way that seems most easiest to work in, starting with an empty window and ending with a window having a more, dare we say, Photoshop-like look. Anyway, GIMP 2.8 can look like other Windows programs, not only Photoshop, but say Microsoft Word or Excel, in terms of look and feel. The default in GIMP 2.8 is the old style separate windows. Many of you may be hesitating to upgrade because you've used 2.6 for so long and you're used to this way of working. That's no problem. You can upgrade to GIMP 2.8 if you use 2.6 and still work in the way you're accustomed to. You can take advantage of the many new features such as the enhanced text tool, the cage transformation tool, and many others while staying in your comfort zone if you want. However, there are, I think, many advantages to single window mode, which I hope to illustrate here. What exactly is single window mode? It's a checkbox, window, single window, which simply combines whatever windows you had open into one single window. You can toggle between multiple window mode and single window mode by unchecking and checking this checkbox. Here is GIMP 2.8 in multiple window mode, with the toolbox and tool options under it on the left, the image window in the center, and the layer channels and path stockable dialogs on the right, in three separate windows, a familiar enough setup in GIMP 2.6. I'll go to the Windows menu and check the Single Window Mode option and maximize the window. Now the display is one window with three formal windows combined. On the left is the toolbox with the tool options associated with the active tool at the bottom. This area can be resized by dragging on the area's right border to the left or right. The image area in the center can be expanded or contracted by dragging on its left and right border. The dockable dialogs area can be re resized as well. I'll go back to multiple window mode by unchecking the single window mode and che checkbox from the windows menu. We're going to close the toolbox, tool options, and dockable dialogs in multiple windows mode. So we start with a completely blank window and then we'll rebuild the setup in single window mode. I'll close the dockable dialogs window, then I'll close the toolbox and tool options. By the way, in GIMP 2.6, if you close the toolbox, GIMP itself would close, which might not be what you want. In GIMP 2.8, you can close the toolbox without GIMP thinking that it should close as well. Now I'll go back to the window menu and check single window mode and maximize it. Now we have a completely blank window. We're ready to customize to our old setup. First, I'll bring that the toolbox. To do that, from the Windows menu, select New Toolbox or press the Control B shortcut. This enables the toolbox display in the upper left corner of the window. The various tools in the toolbox can be selected. However, they're not too useful unless we have the tool options, which logically belongs below it. To get the tool options dialog to display, I'll go to the Window menu, then select Dockable Dialogs, and then Tool Options. The dialog displays on the right side of the window. The window manager assumes that if there's no dockable dialog displaying, the selected dialog should display on the right side, as shown. But we want the tool options to be under the toolbox. How can we move it? Simple enough. Left click and drag the tool op options icon to the area below the toolbox. When the area turns blue, that's a signal that the tool options can be dropped into the area. Release the left mouse button and the tool options now are under the toolbox. The options for the currently active tool display. If I change the active tool, say to the paintbrush or the blend tool, the tool options change to match it. I can drag the right border to expand or contract both the toolbox and the tool options. Now it's time to restore the layers, channels, and paths dialogs. First, layers. I'll go to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and select Layers. The Layers tab is added to the Tool Options tab. That's not what we want. We want the Layers tab to display in the right hand area. To move it there, I'll do the reverse of what I did when I moved the Tool Options dialog. I'll navigate to the Layers icon, hold the left mouse button down, and drag the icon to the right side area. When the area turns blue, I'll release the left mouse button. Now the Layers tab is moved and the Tool Options associated with the toolbox as before. I'll add the Channels dialog by going to the Windows Dockable Dialogs Channels. This time, the Channels dialog is added to the Layers dialog on the right side. The rule is that an added dialog is added in the area where the last previously added dialog was added. Similarly, I can add the Paths dialog, and it's now added a tab on the right. 
Now we have layers, channels, and paths added as before. Clicking on the layers dialog, we see grayed out because no image is active. The familiar icons for adding a layer, moving a layer up and down, creating a duplicate layer, anchoring a layer, and deleting a layer. Actually, there's one additional icon, creating a layer group. In GIMP 2.8, layers can be grouped. When you have 100 layers, this is a nice feature. I'll explain this feature in a future tutorial. Here's something that could not be done in GIMP 2.6. The dialogs can be grouped in columns as well. I'll add the Brushes dialog by going to Windows Dockable Dialogs Brushes. I'll left click and drag the Brushes icon to the left border of the dialog display area. When the border turns blue, I'll release the mouse button. Now I've created two columns of dialogs, one with brushes and the other with layers, channels, and paths. I can add dialogs to each of these columns independently. For example, I'll add the Patterns tab to the Brushes tab. I'll click on the right arrow of the Brushes tab area and click Add Tab and Add Patterns. Now I'll add gradients. I'll move gradients so it's between brushes and patterns. I'll move the Channels dialog to the area with the Brushes tab. I can expand and contract the entire dialogs area as well. The dialogs can be grouped as rows as well, but I don't think it's as useful. I'll left click the channels icon to the top border. When the border turns blue, I'll release the left mouse button. Now the channels dialog is above the other dialogs in the same group, but you're forcing the channels dialog to share the column with the other dialogs in this group, which poses a problem if you want to see all the options in the brushes dialog, for example. I think a better way is to group the dialogs in columns. So I'll drag the channels dialog back into the area with the brushes dialog. Okay, our, in our window is arranged the way we want it. By the way, by default, GIMP remembers all our changes, which is nice because we wouldn't want to redo all these steps every time we start up GIMP. Let's start using GIMP. I'll open a new image by selecting File New. The default canvas width on my GIMP is 640 pixels and the default height is 400 pixels. Suppose I wanted to make the canvas twice as big. In the old GIMP, the ratio between the width and height was locked, so I could change the height to 800 and the width would adjust accordingly. This is not true in GIMP 2.8. I'll change the height to 800 pixels. The width remains at 640 pixels. However, GIMP allows mathematical calculations, so I can enter 640 times 2 for the width, and the GIMP figures out that it's 1280 pixels. Now we have a canvas that's 1280 by 800 pixels. There's a problem. The image is too small to fit in the area allotted to it. There are two solutions. I can press Ctrl J, the so-called shrink wrap function, which fits the image to the window, or I can press Ctrl Shift J, which fits the window to the image. Of course, we can zoom in and out with different percentages as before. These are handy features. Now, here's a neat feature. I'll open an existing image by selecting File Open. Instead of the image opening in a separate window, it opens in the same area as the existing image with a tab associated with the image. This makes it easy to tab between one image and another. There's no real limit to the number of images that can be open at one time, except for the RAM in your computer. I'll open another image and tab among the three. I think you'll agree that this makes editing multiple images much simpler. The look and operation of the sliders has changed in GIMP 2.8. To illustrate, I'll select the entire Taj Mahal image select Edit Copy, click on the new image, and select Edit Paste as New Layer. Let's look at the Layers dialog. There are two layers. The Taj Mahal Layer Pixels display. If I select the new layer and enter zero for opacity, the white background displays, as one would expect. If I position the mouse so there's an up arrow displaying in the opacity selection and click on it, the slider immediately snaps to where that position is. So there's a mixture of the image and the white background layer. If I position the mouse so there are left and right arrows in it, the change is more gradual, giving us finer control over the opacity level. This technique works for all sliders in GIMP 2.8. The last feature I'll show is how saving image files has changed. File Save now only saves the file in the GIMP's native XCF file format. This format saves all the GIMP settings, notably the layers, but also other things. This means that if you add the image in XCF format, you can continue to edit the image. Saving in any other format, including JPEG, PNG, or Photoshop's PSD format, is technically called an export. I'll select File Export and click the Advanced tab. From there, you can export to JPEG, GIF, TIFF, Targo, and any number of other formats, including PSD. So if you want to continue the edit in Photoshop, you can. The shortcuts are Control-S for Save, Shift-Control-S for Save As, Control-E for Export, and Shift-Control-E for Export 2. That's my brief tour of GIMP 2.8's 
user interface. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be doing more GIMP 2.8 tutorials focusing on the specific new features such as text tool enhancements and the cage transformation tool. Happy GIMPing!